And we are live. Good morning, sir. Dick H. from Mary J. I'm happy to have you here. Good morning, Uchi. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for coming to Poetry is My Tea Show. It's an honor to me, sir. Thank you so much, sir. How are you doing today, sir? I'm very well, thank you. The, okay, the all right. This is, yeah. yeah. Okay, welcome to Poetry is My Tea Show. But before we start this interview, sir, I would like you to introduce yourself. Maybe just tell us three, two or three things about you, because I know new people would like to know you. But YouTube have over 10 billion plus downloads. So anybody can see this video. The algorithm can just suggest this video for anybody. So they were like, who is this person? I don't know you. Wow, where has he been? Where have I been in this world? I don't know somebody like Titi Tukumiriji. So I'd like you to introduce yourself in just one minute. Sir. My name is DK Chukumiriji. I am a poet. Uh, I I was I live in Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian, born and bred in Nigeria. Um, I am also uh, a father with four children. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, for for that. Um, this poetry is my tissue is for you to tell us how you found poetry and writing entirely. So we'd like you to share your story with us. So this is why I said I will bring you here for this show. And I'm happy to have you here, sir. Thank so you. So my, um, my first question yeah. is, how do you find poetry? The how did place. I find it? How did I, it has, how did I start? Writing poems. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your story. Okay. Um, I come from a very artistic family. Um, my father uh, was a journalist. Uh, my mother, at the time I was born, was, was a teacher and also a fantastic storyteller. Uh, my elder brother is a poet, a musician, my other elder brother used to draw. My elder sister is an artist. Uh, so I, I, I grew up in a family of artists and creatives and I was surrounded by music and books and all diverse expressions of creativity growing up. And children tend to soak in their environment. So children tend to, to become what they see around them often. So I, I always saw books, I always saw creativity around me. So it was quite a natural path for me to follow, a natural thing to begin to do, like uh, the ones ahead of me were doing. When it comes to poetry in particular, um, my first inspiration was and still is my elder brother, uh, Che, who... Um, growing up, he was always writing poems, he was always writing songs, and um, I wanted to be just like him. And that is how I started writing poems. In fact, my first poems were, I would just copy his poem into my exercise book and say it's my poem. That's how I started writing poetry, by copying the poems of my elder brother, you know. And so I, I got introduced to that uh, practice of writing as a way of expressing myself. My elder brother uh, at the time also had a very good friend called Onisi, Dominic. And Onisi was also a very strong influence for me to also begin to write or to continue to write poetry. You know, so this is how I, f I found poetry. I f my brother used to write poems, still does, you know, but from back then when I was young and I used to Emulate him. And by emulating him, I stumbled into poetry. Wow. Wow. Now, I understand that everybody that wants to start there is somebody that they emulate what they are doing, their work. Since it is art, mm -hmm. you emulate, you imitate mm -hmm. what people are doing before you find your voice. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I understand. I think that is common. Good. You imitate before you innovate. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just like this book, there's a book I read, Still Like an Artist. I think the book is here. Still Like an Artist. This is what this book is even saying. It's not about this. You may say it. You yes, may say it. I don't know if you yes. can see it. Still Like an Artist. I can see it. Yeah. This book. Like... I wish I never created yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. It's, wow, a, it's wow, an important, wow. it's an important state. It's an important stage in the evolution of any artist or creative. You have to have somebody who in your environment, who whose artwork or whose artistry you can relate with, it moves you deeply. So it's not just enough that the person is successful. That's the mistake a lot of young people make today. They follow artists just because the artist is successful. But that's somebody that is simply successful. That's not your real mentor. Your mentor is somebody whose artistry moves you. Whether or not it is successful is, is not the point. But when you engage with the person's artistry, it moves you deeply. That is the person you need to follow. That's the person you need to latch on to. That's the person you need to begin to imitate. And as you immerse yourself in that person's, how they work, how they do their thing, because you, you because it's a there's an affinity, you know, so their fire will light your own fire. But if you follow somebody just because they are successful, but their art does not move you, they can never light yes. your fire. You yeah, end up money. just imitating them. Yes. You imitate, yeah, but you never cast, evolve to where you can innovate. <laughs> but when you follow follow somebody whose artwork moves you. You will begin from imitation, but then you will evolve into innovation because their fire will light your fire. So, so that's an important distinction to me. Mm, very good. Their fire will ignite you. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Okay, sir. When you were starting out, what were the struggles? Where the challenges you were going through? Like your first point. How was your first point? How do you see your first point? Was it fantastic? <laughs> 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 Uh, my first poem was like every other first poem. It was very poor quality, not very good. But at the time, I thought it was the best thing in the world, you know. <laughs> so that's how everybody's first poem is. You know, so I started out just, you know, writing. I was about 11 years old or something when I began to follow in my brother's footsteps and write, you know, poems. So it was an 11-year-old boy writing you know so it was it was the expression of an of an 11 year old it's today you can read it and say oh, it's childish you know it needs to grow it needs you know but you need to start somewhere and the important thing is to start you know your start can never be as good as your end you know you you get you keep getting better so no matter how good you are when you start if you persist your end will always be better than your beginning my my beginning was you know, very ordinary. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. You know, when poet writes the first time, just like you said, they're like, ha, ah, man, it will not be good anyway. But there are some people who will come and the way they, 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 they think poet in society, there are some societies that love value these people. They're like, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your time. What is this rubbish? So all these critics, when you were writing poems at that time, when you were setting up, what were the kind of um, feedback people were giving you for your point. I know you would have been it to some person. What are the criticism, criticism that people were I, saying to your work, like, this is rubbish, or, or was it that good? No, I also got the, this is rubbish. Uh, what are you writing? I don't understand it. This is too deep. I beg, wait me this. Yeah. I, I got all those uh, re reactions from friends, from people around. So there are some people that are just thinking, this is an Ajebo thing, which one is poem, you know? Some people thought it was Ajebo movement. Some people thought it was a waste of time, you know? Is this going to, where is it? It's not music, it's like, what is it? You know, poetry. Some people thought it was a Uibo thing. It's not a Niger thing. Some people just thought, look, I don't, I don't even understand what you're saying. You know, I beg, this is too hard. So I'm I got telling, all those, they... uh, <laughs> say it's too I got deep, all those too deep, it's too deep, you know. But um, there were also people that loved it. I thought, oh, wow, this is amazing. This is really good and all that. And it was the support and love and encouragement of the people that liked it 
that probably helped me keep writing. Because in all fairness, a lot of the criticism I was getting from the people that didn't like it was accurate. It was actually poor quality, unnecessarily difficult to understand and all that. It was accurate. But the thing about this criticism and critique is that you have to be careful not to crush the spirit as you are critiquing and criticizing. So somebody that yes, has talent, that of true. course, their, their first output is not going to be great. So you have to be able to correct without crushing the person's spirit. You have to be able to, to correct them in a way that allows them to continue to evolve and continue to grow because that is how they will get better. You know, so now looking back, I'm also grateful that very early I developed the capacity to, you have to have a thick skin as an artist, as a creative, to take criticism without giving up. If somebody says what you're writing is rubbish, you have to be able to listen and understand why do they think it is do they have a point you understand even though you don't like but yes But do they have a point? Is there so, um, are you there? Sir, to learn the from what is saying. Uh -huh. So very early in my career as a as a creative, I developed that capacity to to separate how somebody said something from what the person is saying. So I may not like how you said it. it through use it regarding for you are the best here. Yeah. Yes, I can hear Hello. you now. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Yes, so, I can hear you now. Uh -huh. So anyway, the point is just that criticism is an important part of growth as a creative. So you have to have the, the, a thick skin to take it and the capacity to take what is uh, relevant and applicable to you and use it to get better. Thank you for that, sir. I want to ask this question because people seem to not know the importance of poetry. People see poetry as something not for everybody. Well, people have their own philosophy. But I want to ask you, sir, because you are a legend in this industry, what is the importance of poetry to the society? Poetry is an art form that allows, of all the different art forms, is one of the ones that really allows you to express how you feel. You know, uh, poetry does not have to be logical or rational. It can simply be the crying out of your spirit. And it's very important because if we don't find healthy ways of expressing how we feel, then we'll find unhealthy ways, destructive ways of expressing how we feel. So on a very rudimentary level, basic level, poetry is very important for just maintaining a healthy mental state. If, you, if you're somebody that knows how to express yourself through poetry, you're able to deal with all kinds of challenges in life in a, in a healthy, uh, and uh, in a healthy and creative way. Now, poetry also, like any other form of creativity, it's about the imagination. It's about articulating the unseen, the, the, what, what is not yet evident, or what is not immediately apparent about reality. You know, so poetry is about the imagination. And an effective use of the imagination is important 
in development, social and political development. For a society to move forward, people have to imagine the destination. You have to see where you are going before you can get there. Somebody has to make the vision plain. And it yeah. is often creatives that do this. I always tell people that art always goes ahead of science. So that before we were building rockets to the moon, people were writing about going to the moon. Today, people write about teleportation. It's, it's fiction. Yes, yes, yes. But they are futuristic. In 100 years, it may not be fiction. The, the, that's the role of a creative in society, that you reimagine things and stimulates the brain to invent, to think. Because when the creative imagines it, then the engineer or the scientist or the researcher begins to walk towards that. So the more we are able to stimulate our imagination as Nigerians and imagine a reality different from where we are now, the more impetus we give to our society to move towards that reality. And poetry is at the forefront of, of that. If we use poetry as a transformational tool. So these are some of the roles that art generally and poetry in particular uh, play in society. Thank you so much sir, for that. You see, just like writers are people who are futuristic, that too futuristic. Even though you go know, that writing is um is um fiction, but there's a time that there's a time it will happen. Thing they are yeah. seeing that is fiction will just come. Like now this metaverse, people that people that are written about metaverse, I've been talking about it. You will see film when metaverse have have been in movies. But now look at Max Zuga that you have come, you have brought the idea of metaverse. We are in the universe now, it's taking us to metaverse. Another word, man creating another word. You see, they are futuristic. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Because people never believe that something like that can ever happen. <laughs> Nobody believes. What, what is metaverse? Who knows yeah. that something like that can ever happen? Nobody knows. But now, he said the idea. Everybody bought into the idea. Everybody are buying into his idea. They believe yeah. it can happen. And now, everybody see this is the fastest way to sell anything to anyone. Yeah. And it's through your imagination. It's they'll that, just put something in your face. It's you your imagination. It. It's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. It's that's like that's another the power of art. Yeah. That's the it. Power of you know, once you <laughs> plan something in the imagination, it's just a question of time before it manifests in the physical. You know, once you just put an idea in somebody's mind, in a child's mind, it's just a question of time. You know, and the most effective way for planting ideas in so, in the subconscious is through art. It's not through speeches and lectures. It's art, music, stories, poetry. That's how ideas are planted deep in the subconscious. And then from there, you just give it time. It may be 10 years, it may be 25 years, it may be 150 years. But that seed will germinate, it will take root, and it will bear fruit. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for that, sir. Thank you. Yes. Okay, now, since you found poetry, because of the home you were from, just like your father is or your brother is like a hero to you, somebody you look on to. If not for mm -hmm. how wait, let us as let us imagine. What if we're not from this background? Would you have found poet? Would you have been a poet? Would you? <laughs> I don't I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I would yeah. maybe not have discovered that gift. I may not have found this path. The people that you encounter in life are, are important, you know. I believe that uh, I believe in God, but I don't. I, I, he doesn't come down and do things by himself. He uses people, so he will put people in your life to tilt you in the direction that you need to go. So he put those people in my life to tilt me in the direction that I needed to go, and I'm forever grateful for it. Exactly. If God wants to help you, He will send somebody. If devil wants to destroy you, He will still send somebody. Exactly. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. It's true, you are right. So the people you encounter are describing where you are going to. Yes, sir. Exactly. Okay. Now, sir, 
how has poetry helped you? How has poetry helped you? How has poetry, uh, poetry. changed your life? Is poetry has helped me in so many ways. Growing up, poetry helped me deal with the pressures of growing up and being a teenager. You know, uh, when you start falling in love and people are breaking your heart up and down, it was poetry that saw me through. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> you know? You become a poet by force. They you break your heart, poet. you become a poet by first. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> when people say, ah, what, what is poetry? Well, let them break your heart first. You go right on. Even when you, you start toasting, when you start toasting, you don't even know you become a poet when you are toasting. Because you start calling the girl, you broke your carbon. You start calling the flower, uh, you're toasting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Once love hits, you turn into a poet. You know, sugar might see. Ah. Nah, as I see, I hope you see Ruth again. Okay, now okay, you, okay. Now only you is exaggeration. That's what they call hyperbole. Now only you, how, how you take the only hour we did this world? There were six billion uh, people you say now only. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, and you will actually, believe. I will believe. You will believe. Uh -huh. In fact, you cannot, you cannot to somebody without poetry. It can, it's not possible. No matter how serious you are, no matter how, you know, how deep you are into your religion, or your, you cannot toast without poetry. You cannot express any deep emotion, whether it is joy, whether it is sorrow, without poetry. It is the language of emotion. So the moment you want to talk from your heart, you must use poetry. There's no other language that captures emotion like poetry none so poetry has helped me because I'll, i'm a very i'm a very emotional person i'm somebody that has a lot of emotions and i feel them very strongly and people like that you can if you're not careful you know you can fall into many uh, unhealthy ways of expressing emotion so i was very lucky that i found poetry early because it helped me to channel a lot of strong emotions in a creative way, in a, in a healthy way, and really helped me to navigate the, the pressures of growing up. You know, that, so that's one way poetry helped me. In fact, when I started writing poetry, I was writing for myself. I wasn't writing to publish, I wasn't writing to become famous, I was writing for myself. Writing poetry for me was, was an important part of breathing. You outgrow the phase where you are using poetry to talk to yourself, to treat yourself. At some point, as an artist, you get to the point, place where you become outward facing. So now you want to use your art to address issues in society. So now you're not talking to yourself, you're talking to society. And I found as somebody who had a lot of ideas about how society should be, who had a lot of passion about my society, I discovered that my most effective tool for communicating was poetry. It's not that I couldn't communicate in other ways. I could communicate in other ways, but I found that the most effective that allowed me to communicate, not just talk, but to communicate, which means that what I say travels across the divide and is implanted in the heart of the person listening that my most effective tool was poetry. So I was grateful that poetry allowed me to begin to address my society in a way that allowed me to be heard, to be heard. Many people are talking, not many people are heard by the other side. So poetry, I was very, very grateful about that when I discovered that and I began to use it. Poetry also is a gift that has opened more doors for me in life than any other gift I have. And I have a lot of other gifts. Poetry has taken me to more places, put me on more platforms than any other gift that I have. So in fact, today people don't know me for anything else apart from poetry, you know?
Let's do the sec. We'll be back soon. I don't know what came up. Let me see. I am really enjoying this show. Wow, our brother and boss is here, is here, is here. I'm bringing more back. So, sorry about that. I, I went off. You're concerned. Uh, Where concerned? So, Thank you so much. Um, yeah. So ML, let me stop there with that question. In that, Like I said, poetry helped me deal with my emotions growing up. Poetry gave me an effective language for communicating to society, my society, in a way that allowed me not just to talk, but to be heard by the other side. And then uh, poetry has brought me fame and fortune. It has opened more doors for me, given me more opportunities than any other gift that I have. So poetry has done a lot for me, personally. Thank you so much, sir. You know, some parents don't support their children to be a poet. Some people say writers are lazy people, they are this, they are that. When I remember when I was starting out, my mom would tell me, you know, go you know, go watch this, read that book, read the waste of time. You never motivate yourself, you won't motivate the world. Because <laughs> I was writing poems to motivate them. They're like so some people don't support mm. children. Maybe they are children who are helping them because of some chairs that the child have to do. They do not want the child to focus on their book. They want the child to focus on what they have to do. They are home. So what do you say to these people who, who are coming out, who see that, ah, my friend did not support me, but I have passion for this. I don't know how to do it. Maybe my parents or my guardian, people I'm staying with, they don't support me. Maybe I should leave it. It's not for me. It's not for me. What advice do you have for somebody that is in this circle? I understand completely how you feel. And what I'll tell you is this. You must never, ever abandon your passion. Never. Whatever talent or gift or passion that you have, like I said, I believe in God and I don't believe in random. God puts it in you for a purpose. Nobody else has to understand it. Nobody else has to help you realize it. It is your responsibility. Don't be looking for people to understand or to help you. It is your responsibility. But and oftentimes what you need to do in, when you're in a position like that is that you have to do more. So you have to meet their standards and still follow your path. Because those people that are telling you, leave this thing, it is useless. A lot of times, they're not saying it out of hatred. They're saying it out of love. Because they have never seen it work. And they don't want you to be a failure. That's why they're saying it. So you have to understand that when your parents are saying, leave this thing and go and do this thing, it's because they don't want you to suffer in life. So don't, don't fight them. They are doing it out of love. What I did is that I went to school. I studied law because my father wanted me to study law. It didn't stop me from being a poet. I was still writing my poetry. I was still taking my writing very seriously. But I was also reading the book that they wanted me to read and acquiring the degree that they wanted me to acquire. So I did both. So oftentimes, you, have to, you find yourself in a situation where you, you, you do both. It's very rare that very early you have to choose between getting a degree or doing this or doing that. It's rare. Sometimes it happens, but many times you can do both. You just need to work harder and be more disciplined. Because I understand, I'm a parent myself, so I understand what your parents are saying when they say, leave that thing, or, you know, go and do something reasonable or do something pragmatic. But they are, they are, they are more like you a can... mentor. They're telling you, this will not work. This is what will work. Yes, yes. So if it is uh, you are interested in, in being a chef, you are interested in app development, you are interested in writing, you are interested in poetry, you can be keeping your passion and still going to school and getting that degree. It doesn't hurt you in any way. You know? But do not abandon something that you're truly passionate about simply because nobody else gets it. You may be the first person. It may be that it is your destiny to be the first person to show the world that this thing has value, that this thing can be. That may be your, your destiny in life. So nobody else will see it. It's just you that will see it. So don't be discouraged that just by the fact that you are the only one and nobody else is encouraging you. No, that is not enough reason. 
to abandon something that you are truly passionate about. I believe that in life, you must follow your deep inner feelings, your conviction about something. If you really feel deeply passionate about something, then you need to, to follow it. You know, you know some parents, they're like, people, the parents who are religious, the ones that are religious, they're like, you know I'm a Christian, you know I'm a pastor. Junior, you know I'm a pastor. So why will you be singing secular songs? Why will you go to university and be singing hip-hop and be stacking up and down? You tell me you want to be like whiskey. I'm a pastor. Come on, come to the church and do. You can't you sing for God. <laughs> you understand? So, <laughs> you understand? You can, you can use that voice for God. You can use that voice for God, of course. Don't let the devil lead you to the wrong path of life. Why not use it for God? Use your voice. Use it for God. So what are these parents? How do the child? And the child does not love. The child does not love this Jesus thing. This Jesus thing. Jesus, he cannot see Jesus baby in my heart too. But we say, baby, I love you. You see? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> well, there are two ways of doing it. There are two ways of doing it. There is the there is the crafty way, and then there is the confrontational way. The confrontational way is that you you say, Daddy, no, I'm not going to be singing this Jesus song. I want to be like Whiskey. And then you let it, whatever happens, let it happen. If if Daddy kicks you out of the house, whatever ah, it is. Ah, my mama will beat me, eh? <laughs> and make me she beat you. That, that's the confrontational <laughs> way. And for some people, that's the only way they can do it. Then there's the crafty, corny way, which is that, you say, okay, daddy, no problem. You follow daddy to church and sing the church song. And then behind daddy's back, you still go and you sing the song where you want to sing. You know? So that's another way of doing it, where you say, okay, no problem. But, you know, now me get my mouth. You know, you know, they everywhere where I did now. So I could still live my life. You know, so those are two ways of doing it. But either way, Sha, if you are passionate about something, truly, truly passionate about it, you have to keep that fire burning, even if nobody else gets it at the time. Wow. Wow. Somebody need to see this. This video is going to go. I will share this video everywhere. Wow. <laughs> now people need to see this. <laughs> because you know some people they are too religious. They're like, no, no, that's not my path. You must follow my path. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. It does not work for me. Can't be pulling guests up and down. You'll be doing a video that you are naked. You're naked. They're telling me you are doing it. You want to be a star for no, don't do that. Don't do that. So, <laughs> it's I mean, not my there, are many it's issues, there are many, there are many issues involved. You know, like I said, I'm a parent, and um, you don't want to see. I know uh, because there are different things. Like my my point is, if you are if you are passionate about something, if it's that's what you are about, you need to do it. But you also have young people that are simply following the trend. Everybody is doing this, or oh, this thing will make me popular, or this will make me successful. So they jump on it. Now, as a parent, you want to discourage your child from doing that, from simply doing things because they are popular or they are trending or they are viral. Or so I would, you know, you want to discourage your child from doing that because you want your child to be able to act intentionally. So do what you want to do, not simply because other people are doing it and it's succeeding for them. So, so that's a different thing where parents and children can also have tension. And on, and on that topic, in that arena, I'll be on the side of the parent because I'll also tell my child that I'm, I'm not happy if you're doing this thing just because everybody in your school is doing it. That, that's not what this is about. You know? So this is, all, this is about how early in life you become conscious, how early in life you become conscious about your about who you are, your gift, your purpose. Some people come to consciousness early in life, 13, 14, 15. They have a clear idea of who they are, what they want to do. And, and it may be different from what their parents have in mind for them. And you start having clashes from, from then on. As a parent, one has to re realize that children come through you. They don't come out of you. They just come through you. So it's another human being that also has his or her destiny, his or her purpose. You are just a launching pad. And many times, the greatest act of parenting is getting to facilitate that child becoming what they are meant to be. You know, ensuring that you are faithful in facilitating them, uh, the process of them becoming what they have to be. And then this issue of over-religiosity. 
Some people are called to be, are called to the world. That's where they are supposed to be. Whatever preaching they have to do, they have to do it in, in, from inside the world, looking like every, everybody else around them called to the church or the pulpit. Again, uh, what you call secular music does not mean that a person is not does not have faith or is, is your heart. First of all, that's where it starts from. What's in your heart, you know? So as parents, we also have to be sensitive and not impose just impose ourselves. Our as we are parenting, we also have to be listening to our children to ensure that we are guiding them in the way that is best for them, not for us. Sir. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Very good, sir. Okay, sir, what are the things that motivate your right up? Is it when you are sad, happy, or just you write anything? Because that for people now, it's only when they are sad. That's they write their best poems. Only when they are sad. So you're like, ah, I'm this creative when I'm sad. <laughs> so I want to know what motivates mm -hmm. your write up. I write anytime I want to write. I, I don't need anything to motivate me. So, um, I, I write whenever I want to write, and on anything I want to write about. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm no longer motivated by emotions or situations. Or if I wake up and I and I have to write, I write. You know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow! You know, there's some people that are waiting for something to motivate them before they do something. Just like musicians now, they want something to motivate them. You got the right one music. I understand, and I mean it's normal, you know. But I think if you do this thing long enough, you get to the point where you you can call up, you can call it up whenever you want. Whenever you, there is a need, you call it up. It doesn't mean that there are still times when I write because I feel like writing, you know. But I'm just saying that I don't need to wait for any feeling or any situation or anything to push me. If I wake up to tomorrow and I want to write, I'll just start writing. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, I would love you to entertain us with one of your favorite poems, maybe short poem. You can do that for us, maybe recite it, just like you're on the stage now. Uh -huh. I'm not on the stage now, I'm looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, anyway, this is one I always do when people ask me, just do a poem. So I do a short one. Title right. of the Revolution Has No Trying. Uh. Do you not know that poverty is not an ego man? He'll not spare the rest of us and afflict only the Ishan. He'll step across the river and come across the border. So when the drums sound, let everybody answer. Do you not know that corruption is not from Nekede? They will not hear that Ife has no dealings with Mother Keke. He will wake up all of our children at night with hunger. So when the drums sound, let everybody answer. Do you not know that HIV AIDS is not Kanuri? He will not spare the rest of us and kill only the Fulani. He will set the land ablaze from the Delta to the Sahara. So when the drums sound, let everybody answer. Do you not know that our enemies have no face? They are indigents of no state. They come from no place. And if the boat capsizes, every one of us will go under. So when the drums sound, let everybody answer. Do not say, I am the Iroko, when the forest is burning. Do not say, I am the Obeche, when the forest is burning. Our differences will not stop us from perishing together. So when the drums sound, I beg. Make good answer. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. I remember this poem. Oh, guy, this guy, that Yoruba guy, he was only saying, Koro Dube, Koro Dube, Koro Dube. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that guy? What is his name again, though? I forgot his name. <laughs> you know, I watched the video. I watched the video. I was just you even, you, you posted, you said, this coro du besef. This coro du besef. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Balogu. I remember the point. Gemini. Balogu. Gemini. Yes, Balogu. Gemini. Balogu. Yeah. Yes, I remember that guy is too good. 
Ah, uh, everybody's perfect. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Now, this is the last question. Why is your poem this simple? This simple, everybody can relate with your poems. And I don't, it's not too many poems that, too many poets that do this. So that's why you are just different and unique. And that's one of the things that's taking you global. Why is the poem this simple? People need to know um, that. It, it's, one, it is, it's, it's a reflection of my own personality. Um, Simplicity is something that is me. So in my life, I am simple. Um, I don't, I'm not, you know, simplicity is my ethos. It's my thing. So that's one. My poetry is a reflection of my personality and how I see. Even uh, as a student, uh, those days, I used to do lots of tutorials for my classmates. And that's what everybody always said, that I just make things simple. And whenever I am teaching or I'm explaining something, that I always just make it very simple. So when they hear it in class, it looks very difficult. But when I'm saying it, it just sounds simple. You know, so that's always been something I've done, right? to make complex ideas and concepts simple. You know, because I believe that simplicity is a sign of mastery, that if you really understand something, you'll express it in simple terms. That's my belief. That's one. Two, so I was also intentional about writing simple poetry because I wanted to introduce poetry to popular culture. I wanted to bring poetry out of that small circle where it is only academics, very deep people, literary enthusiasts were enjoying poetry. And I wondered why, you know, when Shakespeare was writing, he was writing for the streets, for the common man, you know. I, I thought, why is our poetry so elitist? I wanted to introduce, I wanted everybody to be able to enjoy poetry. And to do that, you have to use simple language, simple metaphors that people can relate to. You know, three, I also believe that poetry is not about complexity. It's not about opacity. Let me not say complexity. The right word is opacity. That means it's not about writing puzzles and riddles that people have to crack their brain to understand. And that's not what makes it poetry. It doesn't mean you, if you want to write difficult things, that's fine. But the defining characteristic of poetry is not its difficulty. It's not its opacity. The defining characteristic of poetry is its use of language, its use of figures of speech. And that's what makes something poetry, that you take ordinary language and you elevate it by certain idiomatic, uh, idiomatic expressions, metaphors, simile, the beauty of the language. You know? And I think I felt that it was a point that had to be made, that, that poetry is not necessarily difficult. If you want to write it, so it's difficult, that's fine. But don't say that that and that alone is poetry. You know, so these are some of my motivations for writing poetry the way that I do. I, I want it to... See, there are so many poets that want to make a living out of their poetry. But if we all, if we keep defining poetry as difficult, not many people are going to be able to make a living out of it. Only those that can go and win prizes somewhere or whatever. And even them, they struggle to make a living. For you to make a living out of poetry, it has to be... It has to become part of popular culture. It has to be something that average people can consume. You have to bring it out in a way, in a language, and in a form that ordinary people can easily consume. It's when you do that that you have the beginnings of an industry where uh, I can then create jobs for thousands and hundreds of thousands. So you have to put poetry in a language and in a format that is easily consumable by the public. That is... 101 for building an industry. And so that's one of the reasons why I do poetry the way that I do it. Wow. Thank you so much, Sadiki Chukumiriji. I do appreciate everything you shared here. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, Thank, you. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Well we done. Are well done with the great work you're Thank doing. You, uh, well Thank you done. so much, sir. I appreciate Thank you, sir. You Thank, you, sir. Well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, my brother. So, Thank you. Bye-bye, sir.
Thank Take you. Care. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share this video. Share this video. Share this video. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm going to bring in experts in different industries for this show. Please subscribe to this channel. Always subscribe. Share, 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 share. Like. Don't forget to like. Oh. Tell your family. Tell somebody to tell somebody to tell someone ahead. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next show. I have somebody else to interview on UC Media show today. So be ready. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. All right. Bye bye. I love you. See my research. <laughs> bye.